I, I, the point I was trying to make is simply that with Twin Peaks, I mean, it's like, I, I feel, I don't feel like there are any unanswered questions. I mean, there are some things that are unanswered because they didn't get around to telling them, you know, like, was Ben's uh, transformation real and things like that, you know what I mean? But it's like, uh, but, but that being unanswered, I think it's just because the show didn't go on long enough. I mean, I think there are... Uh, I mean, as far as the mysteries go, I feel like those were answered, you know? I mean, they, they definitely were kind of opening more doors as, as the show sure. went on. Um, and, and you could sort of tell there was that, that threshold, you know, what, shortly after uh, Laura's uh, death was resolved, where it's sort of like, uh, well, we'll do... It felt less like it was part of the, the tapestry, if you will, of, of what had come before. Uh, and it's like, okay, well, well, we'll just do a little... We'll just start adding weirdness in, and then we'll resolve it. And we'll try and make it so things don't all resolve at the same time. Um, and, then, and then the movie answered no... Well, I guess it answered some questions, but... The movie raised more questions, but then the deleted scenes answered a lot of those. Really? You thought so? I didn't think the deleted scenes added anything. Really? Yeah. I... Um, the one, and, uh, <laughs> the one I, that I enjoyed the most was, uh, oh god, is it Lyle Lovett or Chris uh, Isaac? Whichever one, uh, Chris, Isaac. Chris Isaac fighting the sheriff, I just found that highly. That was good. I liked uh, um, Agent Jeffries, I liked his whole bit. Oh god, I don't even remember. Uh, which... David Bowie? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mister, I have sheathed my pants. <laughs> um, I love that bit, that, I mean... We, we've got a, uh, a an increasingly complex picture of the red room and the, the lodge denizens, but we still don't know what the fuck. You know, there, there's a lot of, well, maybes. Um, yeah. Which is, which is fine. Which is fine. It's it's that sort of a place. I, I don't think you're ever going to know all the rules of the house. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's fun trying to figure them out. Right. I mean... I don't know. I... Again, I, I think it's at least decently clear, but uh, but I don't know. I mean, uh, I suppose I could easily be proved wrong. I mean, I think that the the big kind of trick of the whole lodge mystery is that uh, humans seem to perceive it as either the Black Lodge or the White Lodge, and that's how it has come down in folklore and everything. But it's actually just one lodge. And these creatures that are in it are alien creatures from uh, from a uh, planet where pain and suffering is their food. But some of them are realizing as they've been here that humans have emotions and you really shouldn't be, like, fucking with them. And even though they can use us as puppets, uh, some of them have decided this is wrong and are either staying out of the game or helping humans in the game against the, uh, uh, the bad owls. It, it seems like we, we've, we've seen a lot of the, the denizens and we don't know what they're about. Um, and it looks like, I don't know, sometimes humans wind up in there and they're, I don't know if they're on the team now or if they're just sitting next to them in the hut, in the room above the convenience store. I think it drives them insane. I mean, I think that's what happened with Jeffries. He happened to be there for one of the meetings, and I think he's now unstuck in time and space because of it. I'm curious, uh, do you think the uh, the lumberjack is the log lady's husband? The lumberjack? I don't even remember a lumberjack. Yeah, in in the scenes uh, in the the room above the convenience store, there's you know there's the the black kid with the mask and the pointy nose. There's a lumberjack. There's the monkey. I always found the scenes so dark that I couldn't really see anything. I know the chow fonts are in there sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, and the kid with the or no, I guess that's the chow font, the kid with the white mask. But like that's the only one that I could really tell. Um, I don't think so, since we know where her husband's soul lives. I mean. I don't think you can be trapped in wood and be in the lodge, can you? Yeah, uh, hell if I know. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's... I mean... Because, uh, like... 
I think Jeffries was in there briefly. Uh, that's how he saw the monkey that says Judy. Um, but, you know, he's he's not, like, in two places. I mean, he might be in two places at once and in um, the Earth level or whatever you want to call it, but I don't think he's ever in the lodge while he's somewhere else. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think that would make any sense. Is the monkey Judy? No, the, mon or the monkey just says Judy. He's, he's just someone else. Who's just someone else? The monkey is just someone else. Yeah, I... I, he, I, I he's not another character in Monkey 4. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I my assumption there, and, you know, this is one of those things where I just I don't feel like it was really in the scope of the movie or the show to answer, but my assumption is if these alien creatures can easily ride owls, then it makes sense that they could ride in a monkey really easily too, so I think it's just... And, uh, you know, one of the aliens fucking around in a monkey for some reason. You you do know that uh, Fire Walk With Me was the first of a planned trilogy, right? I don't think I did know that. Yeah, Lynch's plan was to do Fire Walk With Me, which is about the past, then to do one that was set immediately after the climax of season two, and then to do one that was set 25 years in the future. And he planned to do them pretty much back to back to back. And because Fire Walk With Me got such a horrible reception, he was like, all right, fuck you. I'm never dealing with Twin Peaks again. Um, <laughs> and for 25 years, that's how it went. Or I guess 24 years or whatever. But yeah, he, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you remember that, but people walked out on it at Cannes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, and it was widely panned, and, you know, and everybody got so pissed because it didn't answer any more questions, and it was like, it was supposed to be part one, you know? I mean... It, well, they, they had an expectation of what it would be, and it wasn't that. Right. And... Uh, and I had heard all that before I watched it, so I wasn't, you know, shocked. Like, oh, this isn't what I wanted. Yeah. Well, I... I, I've probably already told this damn story because we've got so much on here, but maybe it'll be refreshing and new at this point because <laughs> who knows how long ago it was. But, uh, you know, I I tried watching Twin Peaks when it came out on TV, and I watched about 15 minutes, and I was like, oh, this is just a, a crime procedural. I don't have any interest in that. I guess David Lynch sold out. And I didn't... Uh, I didn't watch any more after that, and I mean, you know, there was people talking in junior high or high school, wherever I was at that point, about, you know, who killed Laura Palmer, but I just didn't care about it. And then when the movie came out, I was like, okay, well, I like Lynch's movies, and this is a prequel, so it'd be safe to watch and it won't spoil anything, because it happens before the TV series, right? Right. <laughs> and so I watched the movie, and of course, you know, the climax of the movie is the murder happening, and I was like... Um, <laughs> this might have been a bad idea, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed the movie immensely. I mean, I, um, uh, I don't know. I, I find, um, oh, I always say the wrong, is it Cheryl Lee or Sherilyn Fenn? Who's Laura? Cheryl Lee. Yeah. Cheryl Lee. I, I, I enjoy Cheryl Lee immensely, so. Sherilyn Fenn's not bad either, but Cheryl Lee was an, uh, an amazing actress and she, uh, she she uh, became part of Lynch's uh, uh, sort of happy accident style of creation. Right? She was just supposed to be the corpse and some flashbacks, but she was too good. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's so funny that she is just like local actor who was supposed to do like six scenes or whatever, and then two two three years later she's. Starring in a movie that premieres at Kong, you know? Yeah. Uh, speaking of the uh, female actors on the show, uh, I, I've <laughs> just been uh, starting in the second season of... Oh my god. Ah! Starting in a... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, starting in the second season of Gossip Girl, and it's highly amusing to me because... Uh, Majin Amik is on there, and she's playing an older woman who's sleeping with one of the main characters who's still in high school at this point. Uh, and when you think about her Shelly character from Twin Peaks, it's a fun little right. turnaround, you know? That's how her name is said? I don't think I've ever heard it before. Uh, that's how I'm guessing it's said. 
Oh, fair enough. It's possible I've seen him behind the scenes where somebody said it that way, and that's real, or it's possible that I'm just guessing because that's how I say it in my head. Yeah, I've heard people say her first name before. I don't think I've ever heard her her last name aloud. No. He's still Great saying cast. nice shot, even as Zack. Yeah. Which is a little weird. Is, is that the sticking point for weird for you? <laughs> That's the, I mean, my bar was pretty high, but now, now we've surpassed <laughs> it. It's, it's funny in this game, like, the, the, the weird meter is cranked up pretty high from very early, but there are still moments, like, the ice pick in the deer's head, yeah. kind of made me go, like, oh, that, that's, that's uncomfortable. Well, uh, okay, um, I kind of wish we were doing this on Twitch now. I'm like, I want the viewers to write in questions about Twin Twin Peaks, and I can, uh, almost as Biscuit's just very sad. It is. Uh, we should do a Twitch at some point in the future. Yeah, we should see if that's, uh, that's possible. Um, I'd love to do an actual, like, live Let's Play, but we would have to pick some game that was, like, three hours long, because we could probably stop all the time. Right. Sort of stand in the corner while we talk about something. <laughs> you know, not not necessarily on purpose, but just because it's it's I I have so much more respect for less players now that I've tried doing one, even just to test. It's like it's really hard to kind of you know, allow your mind to be doing both things at once. Right. Which, by the way, I found a new let's player who I am really enjoying the current Let's Play that I'm watching, so I'll pimp that out, uh, Get Dave. Okay. I, I'm watching Let's Play of Dragon's Quest, uh, 5, I think, with him, and, uh, I don't know, I just find, uh, he's got this kind of, uh, what's the word? <sighs> Under, underplayed sense of humor that I really enjoy. Um, I remembered the Let's Player whose name I couldn't remember last time we talked about this. He's uh, CJU Games. Uh, Charlie Juliet Uniform. CJU Games. Uh, he plays He plays the kind of games I like. He plays, you know, mysteries and horror. Um, he's thoughtful. Uh, he's, uh, he's reasonably good at the game. It can be really frustrating to watch someone who's bad at the game. Yeah. Well, it can also be amusing. Uh, sure. Some players play on that shtick. That uh, would uh, that would certainly be my niche. Yes. Mm. Probably uh, mine as well. I'm I'm trying to remember. I I I swear I saw your, or I, I was listening to one of our past ones, and then I tried searching him, couldn't find him. Is it super good friend? Super great friend. Super great friend. I I whoever it was that I found. Seem to only have like 12 minutes per game. Is that the right person, or is that someone no? Else? That's not no. All right. Uh, I think uh, sometimes. Remember, YouTube used to have a 15-minute limit on videos, so if, sometimes the really old videos are that way. Right, uh, but I mean, like, uh, you know, it would be like this game, but only one video that's 12 minutes long. You know? Oh no 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 no. That must be a reviewer kind of deal. Yeah. Oh. Super Great Friend is also good at playing games that I would find frustrating and annoying to play, but interesting to watch. Right, yeah. That's definitely how I feel about, say, Deadly Premonition. Right. <laughs> Right in the face. Where else? I do like that the Zack model always has the uh, like head wrapping on it. Yeah, it, it makes it seem like his wound is very recent. Uh, and if our player hadn't taken a month to play the game, that would make more sense. <laughs> I hope that if Geekmeister ever watches some of this, they they understand that 
for just having good fun with, with them because, uh, uh, you know, like I've said over and over again, I sure as hell cannot do what Geekmeister is doing here, so. Now we're all on the same side. Against the man. Against Crimea. <laughs> sure, I, okay, sure. <laughs> I always choose Switzerland when I need a random uh, country because it seems really safe. It, it, I, as long as you're never there, man, I'll train. They have uh, mandatory service, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> like a gun in every pot and pan. I remember the first time I traveled out of the country, I was in Rome, and uh, the guards at the airport had machine guns slung over their shoulder, and I just about fainted. <laughs> never seen a machine gun in real life, and uh, just casually walking around with that over their arm. Holy crap. I'm a little more jaded these days, but... Yeah. And one of our stops at that trip was uh, Israel, which has mandatory service, and like... Everybody's military or ex-military there, and they all look like they could kill you <laughs> beautifully. Because they uh, mostly, I just saw attractive soldiers. I don't know. Huh? Maybe I only noticed them because of certain biases. Why are we shocked by that? That happened before, right? Uh, we, the things that shock us are 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 bizarre. His lighting is still off, but it's still a better model than than Zach. Right. Even though I, though I think maybe lighting is the only thing that changed, except for the hair. It's crazy. I'm in that hallway where this wet lead be. Blown. Oh, I didn't fall down. Yeah. It was like I'm no longer in the same scene. That sounds like the title for something. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how, like, <laughs> uh, you know, how, uh, wow, that was a hell of a shot there. Did you see that? Yeah. It up, like, nearly a quarter of our fucking health. Um, I, I think it's funny how, like, legal thrillers are still coming out and they're kind of scraping the bottle, bottom of the barrel as far as legal terms now, you know? Right. Um, you see, like, uh,. What was that last one I saw? It was like, uh, unresolved antecedents, illegal from, you know? <laughs> Tort reform my of blood. <laughs> my, uh, my ex-roommate's a lawyer, and so I need to just start asking her for ridiculously, uh, archaic legal terms. So that I can write me Voir dire of doom. <laughs> Uh, I think I have seen one called War Deer. Oh. That, uh, that came up. Uh, I'm watching Stephen King's uh, Kingdom Hospital again, and that, that happened to come up as the only reason it was in my head. Somebody went to jury duty then? Uh, there's a, a bad lawyer who, who wound up in the hospital with a bad heart uh, uh. because someone said something about him having an affair while in... Said in Wadir. Got it. I like I like that show. Um, I discovered today that my current therapist looks exactly like Reverend Jimmy, which street preacher. I don't watch the shows. So. Uh, let's see, speaking of Stephen King, we mentioned Joe Hill before. I've now read another of his books. I read Heart Shaped Box. So there's that. <laughs> really just kind of going through current events at this point, because holy shit are we backtracking through a lot of stuff here. And what'd you think of Heart Shape Box? Um, I enjoyed it. It, again, um, uh, it, like, it was weird, because I think I mentioned on here that horns, like, I liked, but I, I really liked, but I couldn't tell if it's because it hits so close to home for me with a, a lot of things in my past. 
Uh, so with Heart Shaped Box, I was like, well, you know, this will be a good way to kind of test if I really like Joe Hill that much. And again, it hit so close to home from a lot of the things in my past that I was like, God damn it. Like, I was just crying at a lot of stuff from very early on. And uh, Joe Hill is really you. Uh, it, it, it doesn't, I don't think he's me, but I, I feel as if he might have, like, had wiretaps on yeah. or something. Um, like, uh, like, he was just like, hey, Dad, I just want to, like, take one of your fans randomly and, like, just fuck with them. Does that sound cool? Yeah. And, you know, Steve was like, well, all right. Um, but the, uh... <laughs> it's a perfect accent there. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, but the, uh, uh... I don't know. Overall, I, I really enjoyed it. I felt like it would have been a much better novella. I felt like there was a lot of kind of first novelitis going on in there. Um, like, it just felt really unfocused for a large part of it. Uh, for what, to me, felt like it could have been a much more stripped ghost story, you know? Right. Uh, but there were some just really nice uh, visuals, some really good moments, and as I think I mentioned before, it gave me a nightmare, so that's cool. Uh, you, you might consider in your in your journey through Joe Hill land um, looking into his comics, the Lock and Key. Yeah, I read the first volume of Lock and Key and enjoyed it overall. But my, my favorite of I, all uh, is still Nosferatu. Yeah, that's... I own it, so it'll be read 